Hello friends. Let's see what exactly is a flowchart and what are the symbols which are used in representation of flowchart. We have seen a problem definition and algorithm which says that it is a simple research and a design step. The same design which we do for a problem definition in simple English language can now be transferred into some graphical format or pictorial format. When I use some geometric symbols for representing this design, we call that as a flowchart. So basic definition of flowchart says that is the pictorial representation of an algorithm using some geometrical symbols. You can have an expanded definition of this also. So when I use geometrical symbols to represent the algorithm which is said in steps, we call that as a flowchart. Now, when I say uh, geometrical symbols, it will use rectangles, it will use parallelograms, it will use circles, it will use rhombus, it will use round edges, rectangles. Let's see what are these symbols which are used in the flowchart and their meanings and where exactly they are supposed to be used. The very first symbol which is transferred from an algorithm to a flowchart is start and stop. You will have a rectangle which should be rounded edges. Some people, what they do is, they two, they, the end of the rectangle can be completely rounded. The two ends of the rectangle can be rounded or you can have just edges rounded also. So both the symbols are valid. You can have just two parallel lines, connect them with semicircles at the two ends or you can have just round edges rectangle, which can be included as a start or stop. So basically, what text you write in those round edges rectangle will describe whether it is start or stop. If I include a text at start, it means that it will have only output but it will not have any input. But if I have stop, that stop will have only the input but it will not have any output. The next symbol which I am going to use is parallelograms. Whenever I am supposed to read the input, whenever I am supposed to display the output, in that case I can use parallelograms. A parallelogram can be used for input as well as output. It all depends upon what text you include in those parallelograms. If I include a statement say read in that parallelogram, if I, if I use a statement called as input, in that case the parallelogram represents an input operation. If I use a, a statement say display, if I use a statement in a parallelogram say print, we call that as an output symbol. So the same symbol can be used for input as well as output, depends upon what exactly the text which you write inside. Then the third symbol will be a rectangle. Basically, a rectangle is used for doing or showing some calculations. If you have mathematical formulas, if you have some assignment instructions, if you are going to equate some equation to a term, those can be written in these rectangles. A parallelogram and a rectangle will have both input as well as output. Whereas start and stop, as I said, start will only have output, stop will only have an input. Now, when I say input output has to be marked, Definitely, they have to be marked with arrows. An arrow says flow of the program. What exactly is the path which the program is following? So, that can be indicated by using an arrow. So, a start will only have an out arrow. It will not have an in arrow. Whereas a stop will have only a in arrow, but it will not have any out arrow. The next symbol which we are going to use in flowchart is a rhombus. Now, rhombus is the only geometrical symbol which will have one input and two outputs. We call them as decision or conditional statements. The arrows which are pointing outward or the output of these decision will be marked with a true and false. The decision will be taken whether to take up a true path or whether to take up a false path. It all depends upon the condition which you place within that particular box. Here, you can have statements like if or you can have check what you write inside it all depends upon individuals you can have check or if if the condition is satisfied it will take up a true path if the condition is not satisfied then in that case it will take a false path the other symbol which we use is generally a connector not necessary that every algorithm should have a connector if you are writing an algorithm on paper if the algorithm representation goes in multiple pages then probably I'll have a connectivity of an algorithm from one page to another page. So in that case, we can use a circle. A circle will have input as well as output. Wherever you want to end, it will have only input. The circle will be marked with some character. 
you can have a character say a you can have a character say dollar you can have a character hash so the circle will be followed by a character so it will have a virtual connection from one page to the other page or from one side to the other side these are the various symbols which we use in the flowchart thank you